Holy moly, we made it to episode three. I can't believe it myself. I'm actually astonished that I made three of these whole things. But anyway, thanks for checking in. On this episode, we're actually uh, going to get a little bit weird and have some fun. We're going to make some of the standoffs to actually get the suspension hunk. A little bit of design, a little bit of cutting, and a little bit of that. Yeah, this actually happened, so let's tune in and check out. And, uh, let, let, yeah, let's, uh, let's do the things. Welcome to my little slice of YouTube haven. Uh, welcome aboard here. It's not like I'm on a boat. <laughs> this episode's gonna be fun, so we're actually gonna get down and do some cool stuff here. We're gonna go ahead and run these CCWs. These are for an old project. And I'm gonna go... Go with them, I'm gonna stick with this. Uh, my whole plan is to build a chassis around these wheels. I have seven and a quarter front offset and I have four and a half in the back. One thing I did want to mention is I'm going to have to go ahead and give you tires. When I originally designed this car where I had a long time ago, it was going to be more of a drag car, so it went drag radials. I never did any kind of auto crossing. So the whole idea was this car is going to be a multi-tool. I can drag race it and auto cross it and do time attack. So these tires are a no-go. Uh, they don't take any kind of lateral loads side to side. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. Only problem is when I mock up where everything's going to go in this car, I need to know the height. So I found some tires. I'm going to use Toyo R888s and I'm going to mount it to these 18 inch rims. So my plan for today is in the next few days, I'm going to make a stilt here to hold the back load of the car because I have it on a jack, which has got to get fixed. I'm going to adjust this, get the height and make a standoff from here to the back. And then from there, when that's in, the weight of the car is now handled and I can get rid of my cross tubes. And then now that I have these wheels in here, I'm going to figure out the width and where I want to put the wheels adjacent to the body lines. Plan is sever all this other stuff off, clean her up, start fresh. Now I have a center section and I'm going to make a standoff depending on where the wheels are off my chassis table and hang the rear end itself. Once that's in, I'm going to move forward, take the width of this. And then in this episode, we'll make the standoffs to hold my Corvette spindles. So this is gonna be the magic trick about making the all-wheel drive work. These are just plain Jane Corvette spindles. And I put rear Corvette bearings in the front. They bolted right in. And then from there, to make sure we're gonna handle the power, I upgraded the studs to these bigger race car studs, which will drill the wheels out and use these. These are actually gonna be shanked in the wheel itself. So this is kind of like more like drag racing stuff that I converted over. They've been sitting for a while for a little bit rusty, but this is gonna work great. So we have updated studs, rear Corvette bearings, and a front Corvette spindle. I wanna get these hung once, once I figure out the ride width for the front. So this is the first part of how we're gonna make the all-wheel drive work. Now we have a spline, we have a bearing, updated spindle. This is gonna be a perch to where the axle is gonna go. I got some very cool parts coming in here soon, so the faster I get the wheels mounted and everything kinda of hung, the more efficiently I can get into moving forward with the next stuff. So this is gonna be a big episode. Let's have some fun with it. I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring for the aft, figure out the height, and then cut some brackets, get those in, then we can start working on the rear end and getting a hump.
Golly, did I make a mess doing that rear end. So what I'm gonna do is eyeball where the center of my wheel well is, find out where the top of the arch is, mark it, make my measurement from there to there. I'll make one from the back of this wall since I know that's exactly the same. And then from there we have our dead center. And I found this tube that perfectly fit in here. It's actually propping this wheel up, so no more tape. We're uh, moving up in life. <laughs> so this tube's here, and then what I'm gonna do is mark how far forward this tube correlates with this. I don't care about the height. I'm gonna base my height off of this with the actual diameter of the tire itself. So that Toyo is 26.4, 26.5, I'll double check it. And I'll make my measurements in height, half of that right in the center of the spline. And I'll do all the measurements for the tube at the rear end. And I'll show you later on about how I'm gonna subtract that. So since I started this bracket and it's gonna hook onto this, my first telltale is gonna come right from here to the back side of this tube. So I'm gonna divide this one and five eighths tube bring this back, then that will be the perfectly dead center. This is three inches. Oh yeah, three inch tube. Okay, let's go design. So we know my tube on the frames here. This is a two by three. This is where my leading edge comes from. And then we're gonna come up, which we know our tire diameter is. So what is that tire? Let's find out real quick. Toyo proxies are 888-305. We have half the tube. This is gonna be the perch for the actual tube itself. And I'm just gonna come over here and connect point A to B. And I'm just gonna freehand it. Try not to save some material. So let's go, boom. Get a little aggressive with it. Boom. That's gonna be for the perch. And then for this one, come up. Just connect this down. Does that need a little more meat? Yeah, a little bit more meat. Boom. Let's go clean it up. All right, they're ready to go in the oven. Let's print these bad boys up. Bloop. All right, let's test it out. So, whole idea about this is it's just gonna go right. Woo! right in. Woo! <laughs> All right, let's go give it a whirl. Measure, I measure the pumpkin. There's a no-go zone for 25 inches, so I'm gonna go 26, 27 inches, spread them apart, put them around the table. Get them in. I'm just gonna tack them in for now. Get the rear end in. And then I'll check it out. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad I polished that rear end because uh, she was hurting. So she's all cleaned up. She's in there. Uh, like I said, I don't really know what I'm going to do yet for suspension. Uh, I think I'm gonna heavily going into a modified three link. Man, I just I wish I could keep these. I wish I could like keep them with the car. I guess I like that kind of like design where it wraps forward and back. It makes it look more aggressive. But very cool. That's a, that's a huge milestone. We're getting the rear end set in the car is tomorrow. I'm going to come in and and work on getting the front spindles. Oh, I'm pretty excited. That's cool looking, man. Oh, it just tripped. Just tripped on my foot. I haven't woken up yet, guys. I haven't woken up. I'm getting there. I had a half a coffee. I need about three more and we're good to go. But on the next note, we got the bed set. We got the height adjusted. We got the rear end sitting. Now we got to get the front here in. So I'm thinking, I want to make something hold this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook on that beam right there. I'm going to use the laser to find out how much forward the wheel is. I just adjust the wheel by eye. I got it in the middle of the wheel well, which I thought looked the best because it's kind of what we're doing now. We're just doing things to make the body lines work and the wheels and all that stuff. Come up and hook up, come around and do a plate 
that has the bolt pattern for that, the 4.75. So let's take some measurements. I already know this is 4.75. I'll design this on the software. So I'll measure some stuff and we'll start cutting. All right, just to tune you guys in, when I made this, I just took the, the Corvette pattern, which was 120 millimeters, and converted it over, it was 4.72. And then what I did is this, uh, when you do a five bolt, bolt pattern, it's just 72 degrees. So 72 degrees off of this, down, intersection, 72 degrees down, and from here, 72 degrees up, negative 72 degrees up. And this is really just a pentagon. Boom, 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 if you can see that with all the circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this up. We're gonna cut a template, and then from there, I'm gonna figure out how much I wanna come off for the actual piece to do an index ring to tie off to our secondary bracket. All right, made a template here, and then this goes like this. I haven't done anything to this one because I'm just gonna use it. And then the whole idea with this is this being all wheel drive, I updated the studs uh, almost like you would do in the shank of a race car. What I didn't show you guys was I actually took that template for the bolt pattern and added 13.21 inches and made a standoff bracket to go on top of the table. I just added half the wheel height so I can get these standoffs like you see here to physically hold the wheel. All right, well that's it for this episode. Uh, we got everything all mounted up. We got the Willwood brakes on, the pedestals in. We got everything centered. So now that we have our stands in, we are gonna move forward to the next phase. I really have a lot to do, so we're gonna be kind of jumping around, but there's some key parts coming in here, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, I got two really big items to come in that we can start really setting the whole front end up. But that was cool. Now that we got the rear end set up and we have the front end set up, I can start laying out some other stuff. And the whole plan is once I get some of these key items in and measured, we get all the stuff engine wise and transmission and drivetrain lined up. I can start really lining everything up. We'll go through how I'm gonna do that. And then we get to start tying it together. It's gonna be an episode where I put the front piece on, which we'll get into later on, which is the fun one. And then we'll start doing, building a custom front subframe. We'll mock up the front diff. And then when everything's laid out and perfectly in tune and I'm happy with that, we're gonna start laying tubes and start laying plate and start making the frame. Just one piece at a time. Keep on rocking and rolling. That's all I look at it. Just piece here, piece there, piece there, piece here, piece there, piece there, fab there, tube here, well there, bang, 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 and all of a sudden it'll be. So on that note, like and subscribe and let's rock and roll and keep on getting down to it. Mm -hmm. Come tune back for episode four. We're gonna be putting the crank driven Pro Charger on the Godzilla. Mm hmm.